Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're here for another Sew Along Sunday. Now as you know last week we finished up the B6702 Sew Along and I always like to have like a breather week before we start a new um, Sew Along. So um, and a lot of times that's a tutorial. Well this week it is a tutorial but I thought it might be kind of fun to also kind of intersperse. Um, if you watch the weekly vlog at all or it just have even watched the channel much at all you know that I love to thrift I think that it is number one the hunt is just a lot of fun to like hunt for things and to get a good deal it's just it's a lot of fun but also the environmental impact of thrifting is huge you know if you're pulling stuff um, that is unwanted um, I think that would go into a landfill normally it is just a great way to just reuse you know the whole reuse um, oh my gosh what is it reuse recycle reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, reusing things. And a lot of times going into thrift stores, you know, we have the ability to sew. So it makes it even better to do some thrifting because you have the ability to alter um, for very little to no money. And it's also, I mean, economically it's great. Like you're saving money on, a lot of times you can find fabric or even clothes that you could use as fabric. Um, it's just a really great thing. I just really enjoy thrifting um, on many levels, selfishly, and then also it has great impact on um, the environment as well. So anyway, um, I had shown this um, silk knit, I also find finding, I live in an area um, or close to an area where there is some, um, uh, high-end, you can find very high-end things at the thrift stores and the consignment stores, but um, definitely the thrift stores where you can get a really good price for things. But I can often find um, great materials. So I found this silk knit turtleneck and this gorgeous wine color, which is one of my uh, darker reds that are um, when I had my colors done. It's a great one. In fact, it's very similar to my lipstick here. Um, and what is it even? Canvas Backs is the name of the brand. I don't know. It's a size large. Um, it's silk and there's a little bit of nylon in there. Um, it is a rib knit. It feels absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I'm going to put uh, some footage of me actually in the shirt. So a few things that I noticed about this. I'm kind of ride the line between a medium and a large. A lot of times I need a large for my bust, but my shoulders a lot of times it can be just a little bit too big in some areas, almost always the sleeve length. So as you can see here, um, it's a little big under the arms around the bust. Um, and I'll talk about decisions that I made, but definitely the thing that stands out the most about this are the sleeves. The sleeves are way too long on this, this top, um, as well as the body of it is a little bit too long, but I'm going to talk about why I decided not to shorten it here in just a second. Um, but really the thing that really bugged me the most was just the sleeve length. I have um, short arms. I almost always have to shorten sleeves. I also don't like having um, sleeves around my hands. I, that really bothers me. So I often pull, push my sleeves up. I don't mind it if they're down, you know, around my wrist, but I hate when things go over my hand at all. I just use my hands too much in the course of the day, and that just bothers me to have things around my hands. So I knew that I definitely wanted to shorten the sleeves on this. Okay, so when I was assessing the fit on this, I did notice that it is a little bit big, as you can see, and I pointed out underneath the arms. Now, I could go in with my serger and just tighten up the side seams a little bit. Um, I decided ultimately not to do this, mostly because this is a silk with no spandex in it. <laughs> so it's a silk. It does have some nylon, and that's um, pretty typical for durability. Um, you'll see that, I mean, even if you're a knitter, you'll see in sock yarns a lot of times the wool will have a little nylon in there for durability for the sock. Um, anything you're going to have a lot of wear. Um, it's a small percentage. I think it's like 80% silk and 20% nylon. Yeah. Um... Anyway, uh, but there's not lycra or any spandex in here, which means no recovery. Now, this is a rib knit, so it is stretchy. So I definitely have the stretch that I need in order for it to fit my body. However, you need to be careful when you're running these types of materials through your sewing machine or your serger because they can distort quite easily. So I was a little leery of running the side seams um, through my, my serger because I was afraid it would pull and distort if I wasn't careful. Now, I could totally have stabilized. You know, you can run tissue paper through with it. Um, same thing with the sewing machine. If you put tissue paper on either side, you can sew and it'll help with the distortion. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to avoid that, uh, but it did not bother me enough. And I also hesitated because I don't... I almost wonder if I do need the space under there because with rib knit, obviously when it stretches more, the ribs spread out more and I didn't want it to be quite so obvious, you know, 
having a turtleneck on, it's ob already obvious that I have a large bust just because there's nothing to break up that expanse of boobage. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to draw extra to it by, you know, taking in a little too much under the arm and then having it spread out too far. So I ultimately decided to leave it. In fact, I almost rather err on the side of having a little bit more room around the body than not enough. So um, I decided to leave that alone. I also decided to leave the hem alone for the same reason as I said. Now I could have put it, my double stick stay tape on there that might have helped stabilize it, um, you know, to tuck under the hem a little bit. But this uh, shirt, and I talk about it when you see the up close here in just a second, um, had the finishing on the edge of both the sleeve and the bottom of the um, top have just been cast off. So this was knitted on a knitting machine, I'm sure. And um, so it's just a cast off seam. So there's no hem is basically what I'm saying. No hem allowance that's been folded up. And so I wanted to kind of I only needed to shorten it by maybe an inch anyway. And that wasn't worth it enough for me to have a bulky hem, if that makes sense. Because folding it up under itself, this is a little bit thicker. I mean, it's a rib knit, so it's just a little thicker. And I was afraid that was going to add too much bulk right around, you know, if I wanted to tuck this in, it would leave a lump. So I wanted to keep this as streamlined um, as you can see. It's just very, um, you know, it's just been cast off. So it's a very flat finish. Uh, and rib knitted just by nature, it's just a little bit um, heavier. So I just, I didn't want to have that excess um, bulk. But that's definitely something that you could do. That's a very easy thing to do if that is something, you know, depending on the fabric that your shirt is or whatever, um, you know, and I often do rehem things. That's a very easy alteration to make. So getting to the sleeves, I decided what I wanted to do. I could have definitely just left it cuffed up and just kind of tacked it if I wanted to. There's many options. I could have just put in a sleeve hem if I wanted, although for the same reasons of the hem of the sleeve, um, Although this made a pretty bulky finish, so I guess it's not much different. Uh, but so I could have done that. I could have hemmed the bottom of the sleeve per normal. But what I really wanted and thought would be kind of cool is to add a cuff. I love cuffs on the bottom of my shirts. Number one, that helps the double uh, folded over nature of the fabric helps to keep things um, pushed up. So when because I do um, push my sleeves up a lot, that cuff will help keep things in place uh, even when there isn't a lot of recovery. Um, and I just, I kind of like the look of it too. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to add a cuff to the bottom of my sleeve with the excess that I was going to remove. And I am now going to go and t show you how I go about doing that. Okay, so we've got our sweater here. And I have um, turned up the cuffs and then I've pinned both sleeves. Now the only reason that I've pinned both sleeves is just that it I'm making sure that I've got a good measurement. Um, so if they are different measurement, then I'll just split the difference. Um, so this one is right on two. And this one is also right on two. <laughs> so that makes it easy. Okay, now, so I need to lose two inches of this sleeve to get it to hit where I want it to hit. So I could just, you know, cut off an inch and then hem it up an inch and be good. This is a um, knitted silk sweater. Obviously, it's in a rib knit. And it's been cast off like like you would if you were knitting so it's been made on a knitted machine and then the uh, side seams and stuff have been seamed so the problem with rib knit is that when you're running it through a cover stitch machine it will st a lot of times stretch it out now we could definitely use tapes um double my the double stick tape that i really love from um so Keezy is a great um, option for this and it will help keep things from stretching out when you're sewing um it can just I don't know, it's just not as streamlined of a look. So another way, which I mean, you can totally do obviously whatever you want, but I'm gonna add a cuff instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I wanna take off two inches total. So I am going to actually cut off four inches, double that up and then add the four inch. So then when it's doubled back up, it'll be two inches. Now it'll be a little less than two inches because, um, It'll actually come up, I'll be taking off like two and a half inches off this sweater because I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance both on the sleeve and on the cuff. I don't, that doesn't bother me that it's gonna be just like a half inch, a little bit shorter. Most of the time I wear my sleeves pushed up anyway, um, but I actually prefer my sleeves to be just a hair on the short side as opposed to on the long side. Even the way I'm wearing the shirt currently um, today, I mean, I think this is supposed to be probably be a three quarter length shirt, I thrifted it. Um, I even like it pulled up. So I don't mind my shirts hitting me 
um, above my wrist. In fact, I hate when things get around my hands, so I'm okay with that. But that is also something you want to consider if you're okay with that or not. All right, so what I'm going to do is unpin. So we know that we want to go up two inches total. So I'm actually going to cut off four. And then when I have folded everything over on itself um, and added it back, I'll be adding two inches back. Obviously, I'll be a half inch shorter because I'll have a quarter inch on each side. Actually, a little bit more than that because it'll be, it'll be a quarter inch. No, it'll still be fine. It'll be a quarter inch on the folded up piece and a quarter inch on the sleeve. That'll be half an inch off. Okay, so I want to take my marking pencil, whatever chalk you want to use, and I'm going to mark up four inches, which is where I'm going to chop it. Um, also, alternatively, I want to say, if you just wanted to tack this up and just have an upturned cuff like that, that is another option that would be just fine. Um, you know, and a pretty beautiful option. It's just kind of, you know, whatever your preference. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to mark four inches all the way around. I have too many times, you know, you're going to be tempted um, to cut this flat and just cut it off four inches. That has come back to bite me too many times. <laughs> I have had yeah, where things just aren't laying flat and you think they are and they're not. Um, so I like to just cut around in a circle. Now this, again, this is a silk knit. It may ravel. I may have some issues with raveling, um, just the nature of the knit. So we're just gonna be very careful and I'm literally taking it right over to the sewing machine. Um, so hopefully we shouldn't have too many issues. My line's disappearing a little bit, but I can still see it. I also want to say I have washed this. So I hand washed this in, um, I like to use the Euclid soap for my hand knits. And so I use that for my silks as well. All right. So now I have cut this off. Um, you know what? It would have been smart for me to go up on the seam a little bit to cut that off. Oh, well. I wanted to, so you could, I guess, very carefully cut to make, to keep this as a, a tube, but I actually do want to make this smaller so it hugs my wrist a little bit better and it'll bring in this edge. Um, so I am going to actually serge these up. It would have made better sense to cut up at the seam though. So then I'm just sewing the seam in, but do as I say, not as I do. So I'll just sew these right sides together and I'm probably going to cut off um, a fair amount um, you know, maybe five eighths of an inch on each side, uh, when I surge that off, but I'll show you that on the, um, sewing machine. So there we go. I am done here. I have cut four inches off the bottom of that sleeve. And now I'm going to do the other sleeve and I'll take you over to the serger and show you how we're going to fix it. Okay. I also want to apologize if you can hear the trumpet music in the background. <laughs> he is I am in the basement in my sewing room and he is two floors up. So he is in the upstairs and we've closed doors and oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> such is quarantine life. All right, so before we get started, I just wanna show you my trick with um, serging. You will see in my left needle, so this is the left um, overlock needle um, on the far side and you, I don't know if you can see it. You may be able to see it when we um, zoom in a little bit. It's kind of tangled up with the brown though at the, at the um, moment. All of the other three, I'm doing a four third, a four, thread serger. If you were doing three thread, just the one that's the stitch you would make in the matching um, thread. So that allows you not to have to have matching serger thread for every single thing. You can just have your regular thread and that's what I do. So in my far left, so if the seam gets pulled at all, you'll see the matching thread and not the brown. So that is um, my trick. I've showed that before, but I just wanted to make sure you guys um, could see that. Okay, so that is how I have things set up. So first, I've got my little cuff piece that's here. Um, the second one I did cut up the seam because we learned from our mistakes, right? This is the wrong side because um, I can see the remnants of the seam there. This is the right side. So I'm gonna fold it right sides together. And again, I mentioned I was gonna cut a little bit off. So um, I'm gonna sew it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance as opposed to um, like a quarter inch or whatever. And that is lining up um, on my machine to the L that's right here. Sergers can kind of be, I'm also doing this with you guys in my lap, per normal. 
Okay, hold on. Let me raise my knife. Okay. It's just a little bit bulkier. Okay, so I'm going to let it ride. All right. I'm going to cut my tails off because these will get, um, that seam will get sewn over when we attach it back to our um, shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. Um, I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do one side and obviously I'm gonna do them both the same. So now we're gonna turn this cuff piece wrong sides together. So I am matching, you're making a cuff basically. I'm gonna match, I would say raw edges. One's your cut edge and one's the edge that was just the finished edge of the sweater. Obviously, if your shirt has a hem on it, you can let that hem out um, and actually use the raw edge for that. It just kind of depends on your thrifted item. Okay, so there I've got my little cuff there. And now I'm going to, um, I've got my sleeve. So my sleeve is right side out. So I'm just going to place this cuff piece, so there's the folded edge, over my sleeve like so. If you've ever made a t-shirt with a cuff, this is the same principle. I want those to be nice. I'm going to match my seams up together. Now again, I'm going to be stretching my cuff to fit my um, arm because I made it a little bit smaller. And I am gonna cut a little bit more off of this piece. A lot of times, just with the fabric stretching, especially if you've got stretchier fabric like I've got, um, it's, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna cut that little excess off. Now you can quarter it if you want, if that makes you feel better about things, um, you know, like you would a neckband. But with sleeves, because they're such a small opening, I just kind of stretch them out and go for it. All right, so when you've got that all done, now I'm going to sew and I am, I do want my, um, I'm not going to be cutting off hardly anything, so I want them to be pretty well matched up. I want to sew these at a quarter inch seam allowance just because I want to leave as much um, of that length as possible. So I'm sewing in the circle, if you can see, if that makes sense, how I'm putting it onto the machine. This is the inside of the sleeve facing up. I've got the shirt is right side out, and then I've got the cuff over it. Sorry, I know I might have just hard to do this in frame so I'm just lining it up a little bit better okay just gonna slide it under and I'm just going to serge and just make sure that all three of my edges are lined up I'm gonna remove that pin so I don't accidentally hit it with my blade because that causes all sorts of issues and I am cutting off um, you know that chunky part there at the seam but the rest of it I want to kind of try and keep as little as possible cutting off. And I'm just stretching everything to fit as I go. And then I'm gonna go over my stitch line. But I'm gonna leave a sizable tail on this because what I like to do is I take a darning needle, like a tapestry needle, whatever you wanna call it, um, and I'm gonna thread my tail onto this and I always just wrap it around, then pull it out so you have a little bead of thread and then you just slide that head of that uh, or the eye of that needle over that, and you can pull it through. And then I'm just going to feed that tail. You could tie it off and then do this, it's kind of up to you. I've just never had an issue, I don't know. I'm just gonna feed it back the way it came through that stitching. And there you go. Should be nice and secure. And cut off, sorry, cut off the remaining tail. And then, You can go hit it, um, give it a press with the, or just hit it with steam, really, and that will shrink things back up. Um, so anything that you've kind of stretched out, that will definitely help get that all um, 
not as wobbly. So I'm gonna do this to the other sleeve and then hit them with some steam and then I will show you the finished results. Okay, so there you have it. A very easy way to um, alter some something that you have thrifted um, to make it a little bit more wearable and a little bit more loved um, and just to have the options of you grabbing it more often um, higher. So, you know, it wasn't awful before, but this is definitely better, and I will definitely grab this um, a lot more, probably, because it will be comfortable around my arms. You know, I know myself. I know um, that I don't like things around my hands, and because there's no spandex in this fabric, pushing it up all day long, eventually that would bag out. Um, so it would have to be rewashed in order to kind of shrink back in again. So having it at the correct length and then also having that cuff just to give it a little bit more um, stability when I do push my sleeves up, I think is gonna be just the ticket. So there you have it. I will show some footage now of me in the finished shirt and you can definitely see a difference. Um, you know, it just, it fits my frame better. It's proportionately better on, um, so you look a little bit less sloppy, a little bit less dumpy, <laughs> however you wanna put that. Um, so yeah, I have taken, uh, I believe I paid $4 for this top. Um, it was just the regular price at the good, my local Goodwill. Um, and then it had a, I don't know, this maybe took me 20 minutes total. It took me longer to set up the filming than it did to actually do the alteration. So it's a pretty quick and easy fix as well. Um, again, there are other options you can do for shortening sleeves and if you did want to shorten the hem. Um, but for this one, I think that it worked out pretty well. So I'll put a before and after uh, collage picture here so you can kind of see the before and after. All right, guys, next week we are going to start a um, jeans sew along. And I have forgotten the number of the pattern. <laughs> it's a Palmer Pletch one. I will pop it up right here. Um, anyway, we are going to start. I'm probably not, I am going to do some fitting. I'm going to make a muslin and kind of show you because this is rigid denim, um, which means non stretch denim. This is made for non stretch. Doing a muslin on stretch uh, patterns for stretch jeans is hard because you need something with stretch. Um, muslin really, even with a non-stretch jean pattern, it's so much thinner than denim, it makes it really hard to assess a muslin because it's gonna suck in places that a muslin is just gonna pull, if that makes sense. You know, if you want things tight on a denim, which a lot of times you do, um, so that it can kind of break in a little bit, um, it's it really hard, it's kind of hard to assess in a muslin, which unfortunately means with jeans, a lot of times you have to do a wearable muslin and just kind of, um, you know, maybe buy some inexpensive denim, um, know your body, I guess, and know maybe some things you have to do for patterns anyway. Maybe even pick a pattern company that you, are familiar with um, the way that they uh, draft off their block um, but yeah stretch denim while it's extremely comfortable and it's probably my preferred I think a stretch denim jean is my preferred just because they're a little bit more comfy um, but they're really hard to do a muslin on so but we will be putting these together and we'll base them first so that we can assess fit and make any um, fit changes that we need to as we sew along. But I will do a muslin on these so you can just kind of see, um, you know, what we're working with and, you know, if there's any rise issues. Um, but I am going to be measuring the rise and all that. And I'll show you how to measure your own rise. Although I am not nearly as um, good at that as Michelle Wynn is on Instagram. I'll probably end up sending you guys over to her because she has a fantastic way of measuring your front and back rise um, and making sure that that fits well. So anyway, that's what we have to look forward to. So we'll be doing some fitting and then it'll just be going through all the steps of jeans. And honestly, this is like the button up shirt. Once you've made a pair of jeans, you can pretty much make any jean pattern. There may be a little bit of differences in the if it has a cut on fly where you have to sew it back on or if it's a grown on fly where it's just already on. Um, so a few issues like that that might be a little different per pattern. But for the most part, once you've done a pair of jeans, they're all sewn the same way. Um, so yeah, we'll be tackling jeans and I'll be breaking that up into nice little bitty steps as well um, for you guys to be able to go back and assess later. All right, guys, I hope you have a great Sunday. I will see you Tuesday for uh, the Work From Home module sew along. I'm be showing off my one piece. It's really good. Um, I will see you guys then. Have a great end of your weekend. Bye.